Of the student athletes from Duke University, uh, just a few reminders. As you uh, begin asking a question, please identify yourself as well as your affiliated news agency. Uh, we'll introduce our players uh, from my side across the dais: Zion, Zion Williamson, Javin Delarie, and R.J. Barrett. Open the floor for questions. On the front right, Ben Garrett, the Ole Miss Spirit. Zion, you played uh, AAU ball with Devonte Shuler. You've known him for a while. Just what was he like? As a player, then what was your impressions of him, and what how long how far along has he come? Do you think? Um, yeah, he has come a long way, obviously. Um, but for me, when I played with Schuler, I was a ninth grader. He's a tenth grader, and I was like, yeah, he's the best player in the state. Like the he would impress me with so much. Like he'd get steals by like act like he got faked out by a spin move and just turn right back. He would be a very explosive scorer, like score 15 points straight. And I used to just watch in awe of him. So yeah, he has come a long way. On the right side, second row. Matthew Chenet with TSN. Uh, this is for all of you. Uh, notwithstanding the no number one seed, this team has gone through a lot this season. Injuries and a tough schedule. Um, how has this team evolved? And we keep hearing brotherhood. How has this brotherhood evolved for all of you? We'll start with RJ. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a challenging year. Um, going through adversity, going through injuries, different stuff like that. But you know, like you said, brotherhood, we remain together. And um, that's what's really helped us along. Um, I would agree with that. And I would say the adversity that we've gone through has, in a way, made us closer, um, just because when one guy goes down, uh, we feel like we owe it to him uh, to, you know, continue to produce on the court. And then uh, when they finally get back and join us, um, you know, we're just happy to have our brother back playing with us again. Uh, to add on what they said, like, when players get hurt, it forces you to respond in a different way. And uh, it just makes us closer as a team because we've been through so much. And the fact that we're here now, I mean, it's a brotherhood. We just we bonded through it all, and it just makes us close. Back row in the middle. Zion, Zion, does the location of these first two games have any extra significance to you beyond just the NCAA tournament because it's in your home state? Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, because, I mean, I didn't think I would ever, you know, like have a chance once I committed to Duke to play in the state of South Carolina. Uh, in a college basketball game, so that's obviously a blessing. So I'm very excited about that. And no, because I can't like put my personal like excitement ahead of my teammates because at the end of the day, I'm on a team and I want to win with my teammates and we have to focus on, you know, just winning. Third row on the left. Josh Swanson, KFGO, Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, for Zion, 
Did you have an opportunity to watch any of the North Dakota State game last night? And if so, what were your impressions of the Bison? Yeah, I got to watch some of it. Um, my impressions were very good. Like, they play as a unit. Um, they can really shoot, and, like, they remained calm. Like, they got the lead, and then Central cut it down. But even with that momentum swing, they didn't, like, fold, and they held their composure, and they got the win. Left side, third row. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Zion, you've been like the biggest story in college basketball all year. How have you maintained your composure through that? And how excited are you for this chapter of uh, playing in the NCAA tournament? Um, I'm going to thank my parents for that because when I told them I wanted to be a basketball player when I got older, you know, they told me everything that would come with the, like, you know, all the on court and off court stuff and the media. So, you know, I was prepared for it. And I'm very excited to be here because, you know, I watched March Madness as a little kid. And to actually be here, you know, playing for Coach K and playing for Duke, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better situation. Second row on the left side. John Del Bianco, 24 7 Sports, Big Spurt. Zion, coming back to your home state, has there been any buzz amongst your family and your friends the last couple of days? How, you know, how many people do you expect to be here to be able to watch you? Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people here because at the end of the day, this is Duke University, so people will be here just because we're Duke. And yeah, I had like a lot of friends and family, you know, tell me like good luck and they're happy for me that I'm able to play in my home state. Second row right side. Um, this is your own journey, but your godfather was playing the tournament. Your dad had a long career, played in college basketball. What advice do they give you at a time like this? Not necessarily that you might need it or not, but do you listen to them, and what might they be saying? Um, just it's been a great year so far, and not to stop, but just to keep, you know, doing what I've been doing, keep and you know, stay even keeled. We have six more games to win, so just – you know, stay together as a unit, really. Yeah, we've been texting back and forth. He just told me that just to, you know, remain calm and don't really change what I've been doing all year. Mike Gillespie with ABC Columbia. This question's for Zion. What is your favorite, most favorite memory about South Carolina and maybe of this town when you were growing up playing basketball? Um... My favorite memory from playing at Columbia would probably be my junior year, um, the Chick-fil-A Classic. Um, you know, playing against one of my best friends, Jaleek Felton, um, playing against Keenan High School. And then, I mean, those three games we played, um, those were very exciting three games. Each game, the gym was pack sold out and the energy that the fans brought was incredible so that's my favorite memory from playing at columbia front row on the left side yeah kip coons for press box view javin uh how has your role either grown or or changed because of the injury to marquise bolden and and what do you do anything differently to prepare uh you know for the games now um, I wouldn't say my role has changed that much. Uh, my the expectations uh, my teammates and the coaches have for me remain the same. Um, the only difference is I just have to uh, be a little bit more careful, you know, especially with fouls and whatnot, um, just because our rotations uh, change because Quise obviously isn't here. Um, but that being said, uh, whenever I'm on the court, I always just try to do the same thing, uh, play as hard as I can um, and do whatever I can to help us win. Back row in the middle. Andrew Rance back at the state newspaper. RJ, a little off topic, but you played uh, at Mount Verde when Jermaine Cousinard was there, who plays here at, at South Carolina. I think you guys crossed paths a few times in those scrimmages, post-grad versus the undergrad team. What do you recall about, about him and his game, and uh, what, what do you think about his future uh, playing here at USC? He could shoot. <laughs> um, anywhere over, you know, half court is his range. I remember guarding him, and he would pull in my face from half court, so. I think he'll be good here. Front row on the second row, second row on the right side, sorry. 
George Ray Godfrey with WSPA out of Spartanburg. Kind of fun question for all of the gentlemen. Is there a particular song on repeat on your playlist right now that's kind of getting you pumped up and in the game? For this, we'll start with Zion and move down the table. Uh, you asking for just ever? The song that you have on repeat that's kind of getting you pumped up for tomorrow's game. <laughs> uh, mine would be a Dream is by Jay Z and it features Faith Evans and uh, Notorious B.I.G. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Roddy Rich recently, so I'll go with every season. Anything Drake. <laughs> Fourth row, right side. Uh, Joe Bettner, Norman Transcript. Zion, you mentioned that your parents prepared you to handle the pressures and all the attention you would get. Have any players or coaches reached out to you to kind of help you also maintain that kind of composure that you've showed throughout the season? Um, like, former players or, like, players former that, teammates? I mean, like, with last year with, like, Trey Young, the way he went through it, not particularly him, but have any players reached out to you, you know, helping you guide you through that, that just any advice they might have given you? Oh, yes, sir. Um, a few players have reached out to me. Um, you know, I don't want to – say their name because I don't know if they wanted me to share that private information. But yeah, a few players have reached out and you know they just all told me like what to expect, like that it's college, like you're gonna have some good good things are gonna happen and there's gonna be a time when it's not so good. So, you know, I was kinda prepared for this. Uh you know, I had like a cheat sheet on what to expect basically. The final question, second row, left side. You know, Mike, you have a watch, Fox, Columbia, South Carolina. Zion, when you look back to last year between the signing, being able to win another skis or state championship, which I know it brings a smile to your face, obviously everything's been going on crazy. You know, you have to get ready, get ready to go to Duke. Everyone's talking about what's going to be next for him, making millions, NBA, all that kind of stuff. When you had your injury a couple weeks back and everyone's speculating, did you have a time to maybe reflect a little bit and kind of be like, you know what, this is my last go. This is why I want to play, because some people were saying he should just sit this one out. Yeah, uh, I did look, think about that because, you know, I always knew I was going to come back because I just love playing the game of basketball. I love my teammates, and I made a commitment to them when I committed to Duke, and I felt like I would have been a bad person if I didn't come back. So coming back was not an issue. But one thing I did think about when I was out was, I mean, a year, a year has gone by fast. Like, just last year, I was a senior in high school. My high school season was over at this point. And just, you know, you just think about life and how you just have to enjoy every moment. Thank you. Duke head coach Mike Shashevsky. That's an opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Yeah, well, we're obviously very excited to be here. Uh, uh, tournament's already going on. I, I know our guys are anxious to play. You know, we're coming off of a, a great performance in the ACC championship uh, in the tournament. Uh, we're, uh, you'll see in, if you watch our workout for 40 minutes today that Marquise will be ready to play. And uh, and I don't know how many minutes, but he'll be ready to play. He won't start. And uh, Jack White, there's a good chance he will not play. He uh, hurt his hamstring a little bit against Florida State. He's close, but uh, uh, I don't anticipate him playing uh, in the first game. Maybe in the second, but uh, it may if we win, maybe in the second. And uh, if we can continue to win then hopefully uh, going forward. But uh, Marquise will play. So any questions that you all might have? <clears throat> Center aisle. 
Hey, Mike. Uh, David Kloniger with the Charleston Post and Courier. Uh, Bill Foster preceded you at Duke and then came here to South Carolina. What do you remember about Coach Foster, and uh, did you ever run into him after uh, he left and was here? Yeah, yeah, you know, Coach Foster really was one of the outstanding coaches and uh, guys in the game, you know, a great promoter, uh, really helped move the needle for Duke in those late 70s because after Coach Bubis left uh, in the 60s, you know, in the start of the 70s was a rocky time. And Coach Bub uh, Coach when Coach Bubis did such a great job and then Bill – uh, put together a great team, you know, and almost won the national championship and, uh, you know, left and we had a couple of years of rebuilding and then we're able to, to keep it going. Right side, about halfway back. Jeff Gravely, WRL TV. Coach, why do you think your four freshmen have been able to work so well together here in an era of I got to get mine, whether it's points, playing time or whatever, they just – yeah, well, they're great kids, and they're very secure about who they are. Uh, they're they're really uh, all about winning, and um, they've uh, they've been terrific, and and our upperclassmen have been good with them. And you would not know class on our team, you know, who eats together, who's hanging with one another, and uh, but those four kids are are very special and they've been parented extremely well and uh, and and prepared well for uh, uh, something bigger than them they're always involved with something bigger than them and it's a pretty cool thing on the aisle on the right side second row Matthew Shanae with TSN. Uh -huh. Coach to that point in particular RJ and Zion with all the challenges this season how have you seen them evolve, not only as players, but people? No, t great, you know, and I, I I, think they bring the best out of one another on and off the court. You know, the two of them become uh, become brothers. And, yeah, it's, yeah, I've had a chance to coach a lot of really good teams and coach the U.S. team for 12 years. And a lot of times when talent plays with talent, talent on both sides gets better. And also because it, it personally, you can become good friends because you actually know what the other guy is feeling because he's also really good. And you, they've not had a chance to do that. And But we have other guys like that. But the two of them in, in particular, uh, right away. And I think a big part of that was our Canadian trip when we had a couple injuries, Trey and Cameron could not play. So it was kind of all on on those two guys. And they they forged a, a great friendship. Third row on the left side. Josh Swanson, KFGO, Fargo, North Dakota. Coach, did you have an opportunity? To I, I, I figured you weren't from Mississippi. <laughs> See, that accent give it, gives Just, it away, right? I thought the movie was coming on. <laughs> it's, uh, the, it's the cold air up there. Uh, it's out. <laughs> Either that, it's a hell of an impersonation. Uh, uh, did you, you have do, a do you do like improv? I, I do weddings and bar mitzvahs. Uh, I, you, you got me next bar mitzvah. All right. Did you have an opportunity to watch North Dakota State's yeah. game against Central, and what were your impressions of the Bison? No, I've, I've watched them a lot. I've watched both those teams before they played last night. Actually, the game last night was a big-time game. Both teams were deserving of winning, you know, Great pressure. Uh, I thought both teams responded very, very well. It's a heck of a game. You know, they're, uh, Coach Richmond, he's done a great job with his squad. They're deep. They share the ball. Uh, obviously, they shoot really well. Uh, but they're, uh, they, play like, they play like one. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm very, very impressed with them. Second row, right side. Second row. George Ray Godfrey, WSPA Spartanburg. After last year's upset with Virginia, how aware are you that anything is possible, and how has that influenced your preparation for tomorrow? Yeah, well, I didn't need that upset. I mean, we've been upset in the first round. I have personal experience. And uh, uh, anything can happen in, in the tournament and because there's so many champions 
like the team we play tomorrow, North Dakota State, is a championship team. They won the Summit League. That, that's a diff it's different you know, uh, when you're playing a championship level team. So they know how to win. They've been in pressure situations and they've been in that moment. And, and they'll have that moment again tomorrow. And we respect that. And uh, we'll be prepared to play a championship team. Front row. Hey, Kip. Kip Coons. You got it. Kip Coons, Press Box View. Uh, Mike, I, I know you and Johnny Dawkins talk during the season. How soon after the bracket came out did you guys share anything? You know, I haven't really talked to much of anybody. I've been under the weather for about nine days. And uh, so I, my, my uh, texting and bitmojis and all that have been, uh, they've been uh, tabled for a little bit. But Johnny and I talk quite a bit during the season. He's done a marvelous job. Uh, with his team, I'm proud of him and really happy that he came to Duke uh, about 37 years ago. Front row in the corner. Yeah, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel, follow up on that. Can you just talk about what Johnny meant to your program in those early stages when you were building it? Yeah, Johnny meant everything. He was the first great player uh, that believed in us and, uh, you know, he, yeah, he, he started it along with that class, with Allery, Billis, Henderson, and then Tommy Amaker joining them. And that served as the foundation for our program. And we've tried to recruit youngsters just like them because we found that those type of youngsters can win at Duke and win at a high level. But Johnny, yeah, Johnny, uh, Johnny's like, they're, they're family, you know, like, uh, but it's so, so important to us, no question. Second row left side on the aisle. <coughs> Steve Wiseman, Durham Herald Sun. Um, when Marquise was out last weekend, Javin got more minutes, Antonio got a little bit. What did they show you during that time that can help you going forward and even now with Marquise coming back? Yeah, it does help, Steve. It, uh, I thought Javin played his best basketball of his career and maybe his best game against Florida State. And... Uh, uh, but that whole tournament, he played well. And then for Antonio to come in against North Carolina and do so well means that all these kids have been ready. You know, they've had great attitudes. And the more, excuse me, the more depth that we have, the better. Fourth row on the left side. Fargo, North Dakota. Forgive me, Coach. How come you don't have his accent? Because I'm actually from Chicago. All right. Yeah, so I'm, you, I, I, I'm from Chicago, too. Oh, so. nice. Naperville. Yeah. No, I'm from Chicago. Yeah, no, You're I, from I, the I know. suburbs. That's why I had, <laughs> no, I had to explain. I couldn't take Shire, credit. Sh Shire tries to do that all yeah. the time with me. I said, you're from Glenbrook. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Forgive me for not knowing, uh, right. but it has to have been a long time since you were considered an underdog in a basketball game. Is there a level of envy in what the Bison have coming into this, that free spirit, that nothing to lose that they get to bring to a basketball game? Why would you assume that the team, that we wouldn't have that? Because you're the number one seed. That, but you, you only win if you have that. So if you need to lose to have that, then you would never win. So we try to have that while we're winning. And that's how you sustain excellence, and that's what we're going to try to do. We will try to be as hungry and as into the moment as, uh, as the team that we're playing against. In fact, we'll try to be more. Back right corner. <clears throat> Wilson Logic, South Carolina Radio Network. Coach, as far as what was the tenor of the advice that you gave Zion from the time that he was out to the time he came back in the ACC tournament and, and what ultimately led him in your mind to be ready to come back and play? Well, the very first thing is he always wanted to be, be back. You know, he loves Duke, loves his team, <clears throat> and he, he's playing great. And his parents are terrific. The, the, not so much advice. I, I just told him, look, if you don't want to play, if you're, if you're concerned, don't play. Don't ever feel like you have to play unless you want to play. And so it started from there. And then we were uh, 
very, very cautious in, in making sure that he was, he's a different, much different player than anybody. And so I wanted to make sure that he was ready before, you know, where he could be instinctively reactive because uh, that's what he does. And once he was ready to go, he went. And I was shocked, really, with his endurance during the <coughs> ACC tournament for him to play 35-plus minutes in three consecutive games was absolutely remarkable. And uh, But, no, it, it's always been – what, what's in the best interest uh, of, of the player, always and always should be. We have two questions left. One's going to be on the left, and then we'll finish in the back right corner. Keith Albertson, KVRR-TV out of Fargo. Um, NDSU likes to spread out the scoring a lot, a lot of different guys who can lead the team in scoring. Is that a lot tougher when you can't just key in on one guy to shut him down? Yeah, well, it just depends on, you know, if it's a really good team. You know, and uh, they're a really good team. So it's not just that they spread the scoring, but they use the court. They use the three-point shot to create really good spacing. And then it creates more scoring opportunities for more people. And uh, so, you know, they'll be difficult to defend. And uh, I don't know if it's more difficult, but it, they're difficult. Yeah, we, we play a lot of teams where it's difficult to defend. And hopefully we'll be successful tomorrow. Last question, back right corner. <coughs> hey, Coach. Alice mm. Williams, ESPN. First of all, sorry, not feeling well. Um, curious how you have evolved or modified your coaching approach and messaging, if at all, when you get into this tournament with a team that has so many young players. Yeah, I, you know, I think it, it, we've been – this is our 35th time in the NCAA tournament then. You know, you have to adapt to the type of kids you have, the culture, 80s, 90s, and and then to the age. And it's not just the age, but the experience. You might have an older team that isn't experienced in the tournament. And, uh, you know, for us, we try to approach every game the same, not just in the tournament, but in the season. Every game is huge for us. And so that when we get here, when everyone else says it's huge, we already know what huge means. And we don't have to let the ambiance or the environment of the tournament determine that. We've determined that. So if we played North Dakota State in November 23rd, it would be a huge game for us. And so it's not going to change. And the more you keep things similar, you know, that you get into the habit uh, of performance. And uh, so I, I think our guys are ready to go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, we'll hold a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Our student athletes from Virginia Commonwealth University, Marcus Evans, Dariante Jenkins, Marco Santa Silva, and Isaac Van. Please uh, introduce yourself and let us know your affiliation. We'll start the first question here, second row on the aisle. Marcus, can you give us an update on how the knee's feeling, what you've been able to do this week? Um, it's feeling better each day, uh, still day to day, but um, you know, I, I got in practice today and, and got moving a lot, so it's starting to feel better. So I'm um, looking forward to Friday. Marcus, David Teal with the Daily Press and Newport News. How would you describe your evolution over the last year or so, especially as a defensive player, from your time at Rice now to your time with Coach Rhodes at VCU? Um, I think it's definitely changed a lot. I mean, when I got here, um, you know, in the off season, we all decided to buy in. You know, we knew defensively was a thing that we had to improve on. And, um, you know, in practice, especially, you know, with a team talented like this, you know, you're going against guys every day who are, you know, just as good as you. So, uh, you know, as the season progressed, um, we knew that was going to be the key to our season. So, uh, you know, I just take it, took it more personal as the season went on. Second row in the front. Uh, I'm Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. This is for Dariante. Uh, you're one of the few players on the team who was in the 2017 tournament with that team. Uh, what was it like last year not to be in the tournament, and what is it that you guys would like to accomplish and prove to people this year? Uh, the feeling was strange, uh, just sitting home, uh, watching the games on TV, wishing you was out there, and knowing the things that you got to work on and improve just to get to this point in the season. And, uh, we just going to play our style of basketball, and uh, that's going to take care of itself. Dariante, uh, Lou Bejek from uh, the state here in Columbia. Uh, you're one of the few that have played on this court and at, in high school. Uh, what do you remember about the, those state championship games and uh, the memories you have? Uh, pretty good ones uh, when you guys beat Newberry. Yes, uh, it, it was a great feeling. And um, I left this uh, the second year we lost, so I'm just try, trying to redeem myself and get the, great, the good feeling in it in the crowd and in the locker room and everyone just feeling feeling that. And uh, we, have to, we have to go from there. On the right-hand side. Brian Murphy, Orlando Sentinel. Marcus, just thinking about the knee, you said it's getting better every day, but do you feel limited in any way, any, any activities you have to do? Do you feel limited? There's still uh, improvements you think you can make before game time? Um, obviously, you know, I'm still still working each day, rehabbing, but um, you know, I haven't felt anything um, to hold me back so far and everything I've been doing. Obviously, you know, it's hard to simulate a game situation until you're out there. But like I said, I've been feeling better each day. And, you know, we're all just looking forward to Friday. On the aisle in the middle. Marcus, as you look at the uh, matchup with Taco Fall and, and that, it, particularly the size difference, how do you prepare for something like that? And what do you see from him on, on film? Um, just focus on what he's good at. And, of course, he's really tall. And then just do what I've been doing the whole season. And I feel like I'll be all right. Is there any matchup you can compare to that one? No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's in the six. It's, you know, it's different. On the aisle, blue shirt. Dariante, what has Marcus brought to? VCU basketball this year that perhaps you guys didn't have last season when he was sitting out and also hurt? A uh, competitive, competitive edge. Uh, he's a tough player, and uh, we know we get out of him every single night. He's going to heat the ball up, bring his energy, and uh, we feed off him every single night. On the aisle, uh, third row, I believe it is. You. Uh, for anyone other than Marcus Evans, um, 
how important is having him in this game and, and how uh, difficult or challenging is it to have the uncertainty of, of maybe not knowing how uh, full strength he might be? Uh, I mean, he's an important part of our offense and defense. So, I mean, it's huge. Uh, whether he plays or not, I mean, we know if he plays, he's going to bring, uh, we know what he's going to bring. And if not, we know he's going to be a, a huge supporter on the bench. On the right hand side. Yeah. Uh, again, for Marcus, uh, you talked about uh, Taco Fall and how it's difficult, but you know you can't compare it to anything. But have you tried to have you tried to simulate that in practice? I mean, you got like broomsticks or ladders or <laughs> something um, like that. Yeah, we've been simulating it in practice. Our um, one of our assistant coaches, Coach Scott, he's been practicing too because he's like really tall and big. And then um, we've we've used like pads to simulate him blocking shots, but. You, not not even really until you actually play the game, so. Question for Ivy. We've heard a lot about Taco, but what does Coach Rhodes stress this week to you guys? And actually, if you all want to take a crack at this, what did they stre Coach Rhodes stress to you guys about what UCF does well? Uh, Let's start yeah. with Isaac, and then we'll give everybody a chance. Uh, we just got to move the ball. We know once their defense is set, they're a very solid defensive team, so we can't play one-on-one -on -one basketball. We got to uh, get the ball hot and move from side to side, do what we do. Um, also, pressuring them when they're on offense, and uh, don't let them get comfortable at all, and just deny everything, and then just do what we do, and we'll be fine. Uh, he's big on the style of play. Uh, it's a style of play game, he said. Uh, their style of play versus our style of play, and uh, which one is going to win over. <laughs> Any more questions for the student athletes? Here in the front. Uh, Paul Woody, Russian Times Dispatch again. Marcus Evans. Um, We've never really heard what exactly happened that injured the knee. Did it just did you just land awkwardly on it and something went out? Uh, yeah, when I came down, um, kind of hyperextended it, and uh, you know, obviously with my history, um, you know, I didn't know what exactly what it was until we got in the back, and um, you know, our trainer kind of informed me, you know, everything was still intact. Um, you know, and then, like I said, just this whole week, he's been great with me, just rehabbing, just trying to get me back to, you know, feeling 100%. Good. And the blue shirt? Marcus, was there ever much doubt that you were going to have a reunion with Coach Rhodes after he left Rice for VCU and considering how close it is to home for you? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, when I, when I left Rice, uh, you know, I obviously looked around, was looking for the best opportunity. But, I mean, you know, after, you know, talking to some coaches uh, and narrowing down the list, I mean, having an opportunity to come home was, uh, was huge for me. So, and then, like I said, uh, the familiarity of VCU and, and the coaching staff, you know, kind of just made sense. Third row on the aisle. For all you guys, VCU sort of launched as a brand, as a, a big underdog story. Now all these years later, and, and you guys have been to a number of tournaments, do you still feel like you have any of that uh, underdog persona when you think nationally, or, or do you think you're more of an established brand at this point? Um, definitely yes. I feel like people still doubt us of things that we could do. And I feel like this whole season we've been doubted a lot, but we definitely feel like we're still like the underdog and still need to prove people who we are. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, going into each and every game, we got an underdog uh, mindset. Uh, even even before the season, we was picked seventh and ninth. So I mean, we 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 seen the disrespect all year. So I mean, that's just a mindset we had every every day. Dariante or Marcus, do you want to add to that? Nah, they pretty much said yeah. uh, said it all. Um, that just who VCU is. That's what we feed off, uh, and that's how we built this uh, from dudes in the past to now. Is uh, the underdog. Yeah. To the blue shirt on the aisle, Dariante. The NCAA's new metric this season ranks your non-conference schedule among the top five in the country. How did those games prepare you for not only the Atlantic 10 
season, but perhaps this stage as well? Uh, we learn each game. We learn each game and we uh, use each game as a measuring stool, a measuring stick, uh, and come back in practice and just learn. And uh, in conference play, it helped us. Uh, we seen ourselves in those situations in conference play, in conference play, and we just learn from it. And the uh, back, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel for Marcus or, or Dariante or both. Uh, B.J. Taylor, uh, their point guard. What do you see out of him? What type of player do you think he is? Marcus first, and then Dariante, please. Um, he's a crafty guard. Um, obviously, he's strong. Um, one of the things that, that we realize is um, he draws a lot of fouls. Um, so, I mean, the thing about it is just being disciplined when guarding him. Um, you know, keep the ball in front. Um, any good player, you know, is going to make tough shots. So, uh, you can't get discouraged if he, he hits a few shots. But um, you just try to make it tough for him. You know, make him take tough shots every game, and we'll be fine. Dariante? Uh, Marcus said everything. <laughs> Any more questions for our student athletes? Thank you, gentlemen. So that you really don't not see, you don't see it. Yeah, hold for about a minute.
VCU head coach Mike Rhodes, if you could have a brief opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Just really excited to be here. Appreciate everybody uh, and their hospitality. It's it's been it's been great, and we uh, were our guys are uh, excited. They're, they're they can't wait to play. We got a long wait tomorrow, but we're looking forward to uh, being a part of March Madness. First question here on the aisle. Mike, can you talk about what you've done? Uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Can you talk about what you've done in practice to simulate taco size, height, and, and how you've prepared the guys for that? Uh, I wish I could say we got up on a chair with some broomsticks, but you can't move very well that way. We we, uh, we just did a couple different different drills like that. Of uh, we, we talk about awareness drills of, of teams we play in that have a different style or uh, a different player or somebody you know with great size or great quickness and we talk about breaking down parts of the game and and we call them awareness drills to be aware of that's you know a, of a really fast player like a Briante Weber guarding you or a guy like Taco Fall around the rim that you're not just going to go in there and shoot a finger roll because that's not going to happen so just a lot of drills like that to you know have the guys understand that it's got to be on the front of their mind when when they're, they're, they're playing in, in the heat of the game, without a doubt. But, you know, a lot of it is prepare for the opponent, but it's, it's all about us and, and, and making sure we're ready to go. <laughs> no, you know, we had a guy on our team like that, like Larry Sanders. Uh, so, you know, if, uh, if you're going to attack somebody that big and, and they're waiting for you and ready for you, it's probably not a good decision. So, you know, we just, we got to play the way we do with our style of play and, and, and move that ball and be fast and, and try to get, like we always do, try to get our opponent sort of chasing and, and uh, being a step or two late. But if they're standing there waiting, uh, it's not going to work. Coach on the front right. Uh, Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, Larry Sanders is 6'11 and he's still seven inches shorter right. than Taco right. Paul. Uh -huh. uh, could you talk a moment about uh, how you got uh, Marcus Evans to Rice, uh, how, how your relationship with him has grown over the years and the defensive impact he's had on your team this year. Yeah, well, when, when I was assistant with Coach Smart, you know, we, of course, we always recruited, you know, that area, the 757, and, and Marcus was an underclassman at Great Bridge when um, I was recruiting Briante Weber. So I, I knew of Marcus, um, you know, he played for the Boo Williams AU program, which is, you know, the one of the best in the country and just kept an eye on him, kept a tag on him and and um, he kept getting better every year. He wasn't the shooter that he is now, but he was he was just a dynamic type of guard the way he moved and and uh, stayed in touch with him and his coaches. And then um, when the Rice, you know, we were recruiting him and staying in touch with him when I was assistant at VCU, but when all that went down with Rice and, and I was going there, he was one of the first phone calls. I think I called him before I called and offered some assistant coaches a job. I think it was a good move. Uh, but, uh, and just, uh, you know, the, the neat thing about Marcus is his competitive spirit, his competitive edge. I knew it would fit my per personality really well. And, and I, I thought, I, you know, I, th I thought then, and I still feel it now, is probably his greatest strength is he just has a competitive spirit that his teammates catch too. And uh, that, that's the biggest thing. And you see that when he plays defense, Paul, he, he can guard the ball different ways, but he can just constantly put pressure on the game with his defensive pressure and his uh, his knack. I guess there's something in the water at Great Bridge because on the ball defense, uh, we, we've been very fortunate at VCU to have some guys from Great Bridge that can really guard the ball and pressure the game and, and impact the game just uh, by his defensive presence. Coach, the red shirt on the right. Brian Murphy, Orlando Sentinel. Obviously, forcing turnovers is big for you guys. So, what are your impressions of their guards, BJ Taylor and Terrell Allen? Oh, very good players. Um, I mean, you don't, you can't play in that conference with a really good team, be a, be a really good team, and, and play against all those other guards if, if you can't hold your own and, and do more. You know, BJ's a really talented player. I remember him for a number of years now. He can make plays. He's strong. He handles the ball. He's an upperclassman. Allen, of course, can can really play and handle the ball. Like, you know, everybody can handle the ball. Guards are really good at when you get to this point of the year, without a doubt, and they've seen all types of defenses. So, you know, it's not, it doesn't mean you're just gonna turn somebody over and get a steal every time down the court, but that's just what we do. We, we play, we, we wanna have great pressure and, and uh, you know, 
mess things up for the other team as best we can. But you're playing against really good players too. So number one, you got to respect them, and you got to have a plan against them. But you also, we're going to do what we do, and and hopefully that that that's enough. On the aisle. Coach Wes McElroy, Sports Radio 910, The Fan. You spoke about this year being a learning experience. Is there any team that you can go back to in your non-conference schedule or regular season, conference season that has a style or a tendency of UCF? Anything look similar or familiar? No, I, you know, I think Temple, you know, playing Temple early, early in the year is, is similar um, with, the, with that, the, the way they play. And, the, and then the two games that they played against each other, you, you saw some, some similar tendencies. Um, and then... Probably, you know, some of the teams in our league are similar. We're really strong guards, confident guards, and then really solid around the rim and guys that can make plays. So, you know, we've played a really tough schedule. I think all our games this year really, really helped us. We, we had some games where we got the style of play going. We had some games where we had to grind it out. Some games we didn't shoot the ball well, but our defense showed up. So hopefully all those experiences help us. Um, you know, there's some teams similar. I would think Temple is one of them for sure. Um, and then, you know, I think it's more about pre preparing for whoever you play in the NCAA tournament. You got to make sure your team's right, more important than, than the plan itself. Staying there on the right side. Uh, Wayne Edwards from Sounds Dispatch. Uh, what does Marcus Evans' workload look like over the last day or so, and what would it look like over the next 24 hours for uh, for Friday night? Yeah, he, you know, he's, he's worked really hard. He's rehabbed. I mean, he's pretty much lived in the training room since Saturday. Um, he's, each day has been a little bit better. Um, workload probably more today than he has all week. Probably tomorrow we'll move him around a little bit and shoot around, but that's it. We'll, we'll see where it is. He's, he's not 100, but he, uh, uh, he's going to give it a shot, and we'll see from there. The front. Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch again. Uh, Mike, um, how good does it feel to be here after not being here last year for the first time since 2011? And how tough is it to be in the 8-9 matchup where neither team's really favored, neither team's really an underdog? The, since 85, it's 68 and 68 uh, in those games. Uh, what do you want to prove and what can you prove from that spot? Well, it, it, just to be back here, I, I said this uh, numerous times throughout the year. We had to go through a year like last year for us to uh, – sort of recalibrate who we are. You have to go through some stuff to, to uh, build your culture. You have to go through some stuff uh, that you don't always like uh, to, to build the program the way you want it. And, the, and you know, the, we, I'm not saying we got spoiled because this is something we want to do all the time, and, but we, uh, we got to make sure we're always doing it the right way on and off the court and that we're, we're never taking it for, for granted. And I think this year everybody is very appreciative that the, the position we're in, but I think it was the reason we're, we're here is because of all the work these guys did in the spring of last year, the summer, and the fall when no, nobody was watching, when the lights weren't on. And that's what I'm most proud about. That, that's building and working on our culture, which if you have that, then this, it gives you a better chance to get to the NCAA tournament each year. On top of that, I... I think uh, the experience of this season, uh, we probably surprised some people and it kept getting better and better. That gives us confidence uh, to go in the tournament, whatever your seating is, eight, nine, you're exactly right, very similar teams. Um, but it's about how we prepare and we go about it. We played some really good teams. We played a bunch of teams that are in the NCAA tournament. So I, I think our guys are gonna be very, really excited, but I don't think they'll be nervous. I think that they really wanna play and uh, they deserve it for sure. Coach, right side on the outside aisle. Mike, when, when, if you're facing a, a team that's got a really dominant left-handed player, and obviously that's gonna, you're going to go over that in the scouting report, but do you find that still sometimes guys in the heat of the battle, that, that kind of eludes them a little bit, and they might you know, shade towards the right hand accidentally? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, uh, sometimes you, you, you do all this scout report and when the ball goes up, the scout report's out the window. Uh, we've all been there. If you coach long enough, you see it. But uh, we talk about having awareness all the time. Uh, you might do it once because you, you, we shoot for a perfect game, but you're not, you're not playing a perfect game. But if you make a mistake, own it, have awareness, and move on. And uh, when you have a clear mind and clear head and your teammates are helping you, that's when you maybe you don't make that mistake a second or third time. If you make it a second or third time this time of the year, your season's usually over. So we talk about having great awareness 
And uh, when something doesn't go our way, own it, move on, play with a clear, clear head. Have you found in your experience that lefties tend to use both hands better than righties do? No, not, no. You know, we uh, we we really talk in our scouting report. We really talk about personnel and who we're guarding and stuff like that. So um, our guys know, and then we we we're really big on talking about the scouting report and personnel. So it's just not a report a coach gives because he's supposed to do that. Uh, we want to make sure we want to get to a point in our program that our juniors and seniors are pretty much running the scouting report and personnel and holding our teammates their teammates accountable. We're getting there. We're getting there, and we saw that throughout the year. So, um, you know, tendencies of players. I, I know a lot of good players that are righty but go better left because that's what the, the coaches tell you when you're a young age, and vice versa. So we just we got to work on it. We, we we show our guys a lot of tape. We do a lot of stuff on the t on the, on the court with when it comes to personnel of other teams, and and we we want to make sure they own the scouting report from that way. And the center aisle. Uh, obviously, the NCAA tournament is, is a goal for so, so many players. Uh, so w once they get here, w what's the mental preparation like, both on, from an individual basis and as a team, to make sure, especially for guys who haven't been here yet, um, to make sure they're you know focused and ready to go uh, for tip ball? You know what's what's greater than getting in the NCAA tournament? Winning a game in the NCAA tournament. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, look, these the, their whole lives, these players. Their push, their first goal is to be a Division One player and get a full scholarship to get a free education. Check. And the next thing is they want to go to a basketball school where they could win a championship. Check. And then they want to make the NCAA tournament. Check. You know what's better than all that? Taking your teammates that you love to be with, your brothers that you're going to have for the rest of your life, and going in the NCAA tournament and winning games. And why not go after that? That's the fun of it. And uh, I, I think you, you got to get your team excited about being here, but Go win. That's why we're here. Staying in the center. Coach, obviously it didn't result in a win, but losing Marcus last Friday night, and then but seeing Isaac Vance, seeing Dariante talk to the team, work those guys around, communication was key. What did your team, what do you think you found out about your team in that moment on the fly last Friday? Well, there was definitely a level of fight, and, and the, guys, the guys were trying to figure it out. You know, I, I think some of the guys were – Really nervous for Marcus because they thought it was a like a career-ending injury. They thought it was they th they're thinking of the worst, and that took some time for them to figure that out. Um, but we've been through some crazy battles, and and uh, you know some of these guys have been through some coaching changes and players le leaving. And uh, you know last year Isaac Van played with with a bad leg all all year and then got surgery. We had another guy get surgery. We had some crazy things happen last year. We went through it, not the results we won in the end. And they've all matured. Now there's another thing that occurred in the, in the A-10 tournament last weekend. I figured out, deal with it, move on. And and uh, you saw that during the game. Now, we didn't win the game and disappointed, but let's. what more do we have? And now we're here in the NCAA tournament. Let's, what more do we have to give to give each other? Any more questions? We'll stay here in the center aisle. Probably more of a dilemma for your fans, but with a 940 tip tomorrow night, you guys only had two or three 9 o'clock tips this year. How do you manage time, emotions, and energy tomorrow with the team? Um, we'll, we'll have sleep in a little bit. We'll, we'll have uh, do a little stretching program that we usually do when we play a late game like that. We'll go shoot around. Uh, we'll have our shoot around and walk through, and then guys will be watching games. What do you, what do, you do? <laughs> well, you're gonna watch. Well, I know what some of you guys will do. We can't do that, uh, but uh, I think uh, I think as the day goes on, you watch games. They'll they'll be fired up. So 9:40 uh, is a late start, but you know these guys have played AAU basketball since probably third grade, and there's sometimes you start games at 11 o'clock. They'll be they'll be fine. They'll be raring to go. Uh, Darion, you mentioned the other day that uh, it's kind of a style of play game. Uh, how much has that been kind of the message throughout the week? Obviously, that you want to get the pace up in every game you play, but particularly you know, when we're going against a player like like Taco, make sure you know you're getting the, the, the pace up to where you want it uh, on Friday. Yeah, we, uh, well, the, that doesn't matter who we play and, and what the other team has. We we want to play that way because we're going to play a lot of guys and and I, the the pace we want the pace. Uh, I want our guys to play fast. I want them to play aggressive because that's the fun way to play. That's been successful for us. So we want to do that. Um, playing a team for the first time late in the season and, and you can get the style play going, I think that's an advantage. Now, there's going to be times where we're going to 
you know, run plays and settle down here and there, but we definitely want to make sure we're being really aggressive. Um, if you get beat in the NSA tournament, you don't want to have any, uh, we should have or could have. Uh, we don't want to say we're on our heels too much. Um, if, if, you go, if we're going to go down, it's because somebody's going to beat us at their best and us being close to our best, um, and I can live with that. But uh, we want to make sure that, uh, that we're, we're playing and the game is going the way we want. Back right corner. Hi, Mike. David Teal from Newport David. News. You guys are, I believe, seventh in the country in defensive efficiency. It's a team effort, I'm sure, but is there one guy you would say is the ringleader for you defensively? I, I couldn't pick out one guy, but I will say this. Marcus is Evans' pressure on the ball up the court starts our defense when, when we're not pressing or it turns into a half court. Isaac Vann's been guarding perimeter offensive players at a high level all year long. He should have been all conference on the defensive end. I think around the rim, our guys are very versatile and they can really move. So that really helps our, our guards, you know, sometimes take some chances, sometimes deny, uh, you know, get pushed to push the offense out. I think our big guys really this year have done a great job of protecting the rim and scrambling because they can really move. So it's a collective group without a doubt. Uh, but but I think certain guys are, are good at certain things that, that have really helped us. The last question here on the on the aisle. Mike, you said maybe sleep in a little tomorrow. I'm curious, going back to the preseason, can you remember the last time you slept in? <laughs> no, I got three kids, and I take them to school every morning, so no, I don't, I don't, I don't sleep in at all. Uh, the players will. I mean, these guys would sleep till two if they could. We're not going to let them, but no, I – I, the problem I have is I don't go to sleep, and then when I then I go to sleep, then then uh, then you hear people waking up in the morning, so it's over for me. So, <laughs> sleep in May. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> these are on. Yeah, these are on. These are on. We have our student athletes from North Dakota State University. Uh, we'll introduce the athletes Tyson Ward, Ding Gu, Jared Samuelson, and Vinny Shahid. We'll start with questions. The first will be here on the right. Uh, hey, fellas, is this now the dream or the nightmare <laughs> scenario for you? We'll start uh, down at the end with Vinny and give everybody a chance to answer. Uh, it's another basketball game. The 40 minutes, we're going to compete. We plan on winning. Uh, yeah, we're really excited for this opportunity, obviously, to go out and compete and, and play another game. No, yeah, every, every opportunity to play in March Madness is still part of the dream. Uh, just come at it like another basketball game, just come ready to compete. What, <laughs> what they said. <laughs> uh, question here on the left, about midway back on the left. Josh Swanson, KFGO Fargo. Guys, you're 5-0 and in March. What is it about this month where you seemingly figured it out and are playing such good basketball? Start with Tyson and go down the other way. Uh, you know, every, every game is a, you know, a big game. Uh, no matter who you're playing against, you know, 40 minutes are up on the clock, and you, know, it's a, you don't want to go home. And you put that in your mind, and you put it in the game plan, you don't want to go home. Uh, you just set your jaw and get ready for a good game. Uh, I think it's probably just the uh, winner go home factor uh, brings out competitiveness and everybody's just uh, playing to the best of their ability. Yeah, we're just playing um, our best basketball right now, which obviously is what you want in late March. So um, hopefully we can keep that up. 
I think we're doing a really good job of hammering the details and uh, really staying in the moment. Um, March is obviously a fun time of the year. Uh, and you can see our guys are having fun playing in the playing the game in the, the month of March. Third row here on the right. Uh, Tyson, growing up in the southeast, did you watch Duke a lot growing up and, and you know, one of those kids who always want to be a Blue Devil? Uh, I mean, I, you know, they're always on TV, and, you know, it's always a good game to watch. You know, they always have a great competition, great team. Um, to say, uh, I've always – I mean, wherever I could go, whoever gave me the opportunity to play was going to be the place where I'd be, and North Dakota State was that place to be. Can I follow? You, yes, and sir. So how do you put that aside and, and just try, try to treat them like another team then? Just just exactly like you said, just treat them as another team. Uh, you know, it's 40 minutes on the clock. You know, it's 0-0. Zero, zero, uh, ball's tipped, and you just play basketball, do something that you've been doing for your whole life. Third row here on the left. Tyson, can you speak to Sam Greasel's growth this year? Uh, you know, true freshman coming in and has improved seemingly throughout the season. Can you talk a little bit to that? Uh, he's been big time. Uh, you can you can tell he's been in the gym a lot this year. Uh, a couple of the guys have taken him into the gym personally and just hammered some things with him. And he he's willing to listen and get better and do everything it takes to you know help this team out. And you know it's a true testament to what he's been doing and on and off the court. And you can see that it's been reflecting into this late March, and he's been playing real well. On the right side, uh, Vinny, can you just take us through your travel the last couple of days? Is normal or has it been a little bit hectic? Uh, you know, it's travel. Uh, there were some late nights. Um, definitely not an excuse for tomorrow when the ball tips up. Um, it's definitely a little different for us, but there's definitely no excuse there. Uh, last night. We'll stay here on the right side. Uh, Dang, how do you try to match up with Williamson, you know, just his sheer size? Uh, I think just come out and compete, you know. Uh, just don't know what's going to happen, but you just go out and just play as hard as you can at the end and just see what, what happens. Here on the left. Uh, this question's for Vinny. Vinny, a lot has been made that not a lot was expected of this team going into the season. What was your guys' expectation as a team meeting in fall ball? Was it to be here in March Madness? Definitely. Um, I think we saw this plan uh, at the beginning of June uh, when we came together as a family. We saw this happening, and uh, through the ups and downs, you know, many people were like, they're too young, uh, they can't do this. But I, I think our locker room stayed together, and uh, we definitely kept our mind on the goal at stake was to get here to March Madness, and not only to get here, but to win some games. The uh, third row here in the middle. Have any, has there been any, I know you guys have said it's just another game, but has there been any talk at all in the locker room or from the coaches? I mean, you know, uh, you're going to face Coach Krzyzewski tomorrow. You're going to face Duke. Bill Raftery and Jim Nance are out there calling the game. Has there been any talk at all of, of the bright lights and the, the focus? Uh, you know, we're aware. We're human. I mean, anybody that doesn't think about it or tells you that they don't think about it, it they're, they're lying to you because we're human and we do think about it. But um, at the end of the day, like Tyson said earlier, when the ball goes up and it tips, it's something we've all been doing our whole lives. It's 40 minutes, it goes on the clock, and it's a basketball game. Uh, second row here on the left. This one's for Tyson. Tyson, just take us through the experience so far of, you know, going through the selection Sunday, traveling to Dayton, now here in Columbia. What's the experience been like for you so far? It's it's every college basketball player's dream. Uh, you know, when you, you put in a lot of work uh, from when you're a young kid. You, you fill out your brackets, and you're like, man, I really want to be on a team that to play in the NCAA tournament and win some games. You know, it's a dream come true. And, you know, it's just been surreal uh, sharing this moment with these guys and just being able to live in the moment. It's just been great and a great opportunity. And I've been blessed to – we've been blessed to share this journey. We'll stay here on the left side. Tyson, can you speak a little bit to the, uh, the job that Coach Richmond has done this year? Um, again, these guys have touched on the, the expectations maybe weren't high to start the season, but – you're playing your best ball now. So what has Coach Richmond done to get you to this point? Uh, you know, been doing the same thing. 
uh, just getting us better in every practice, making sure that, you know, we're making our weights with, with Coach Miller and, you know, just doing the little things because that's what he really keeps us to really think about, you know, the little things that, the things that have gotten us here. Uh, you know, just constantly hammering on us like, hey, defense, 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 defense. Um, you know, just little things. That, that's really all I can say is just the, the hammering the little things. Second row on the left. Jared, uh, what's what's this been, team's mentality been like shooting from beyond the, beyond the arc? Just the ability to hit three pointers and you know, on Dayton able to get to the rim and space the floor. How has that been an attribute here in the last couple of games? Yeah, shot selection is big for us on offense, um, and we're confident shooters out there. We we've been working in the gym and stuff like that, and uh, we have confidence in ourselves, and that's how you know you become a good shooter. And so um, you know we've been get, doing a good job of sharing the ball. Uh, you know, setting each other up and, you know, just got to rise up and knock it down. On the right side. Uh, Dang, your season, uh, the international experience, can you sum it up a little bit in the last several months? Um, I mean, this summer I got the opportunity to compete for the Uganda national team on uh, the FIBA World Cup qualifiers. Uh, it was a great experience, you know, just going out there, uh, meeting new people and just getting a taste of professional basketball. And I think it really helped me this uh, season with confidence and just uh, slowing down the game. Any more questions for our student athletes? Just a follow up. Did you face anybody of the caliber of what you, you might be able to, you might be seeing tomorrow in, in, the, in the tournament? Uh, yeah, there was a couple NBA guys on the Nigeria team. Uh, but obviously, Duke has some uh, really uh, good talent, so I think so. Any more questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.
North Dakota State head coach David Richmond, uh, opening statement, and then uh, we'll open the floor for questions. A few more people here than uh, Dayton the other day. <laughs> um, obviously, we're extremely excited to be here. Uh, unbelievable opportunity and unbelievable challenge for us tomorrow night. And we stress to the guys, to, you know, along the way, going back to the Thursday before we left for the Summer League tournament, that make sure you embrace this journey. We talked about that all year, but make sure you stay in the moment and um, enjoy this along the way. But also come 7-10 tomorrow night, be ready to compete. And obviously against a, a team I don't know if that I need really to explain. I mean, the, you know, Duke is Duke. Um, Coach K is Coach K and the success that he's had. Um, a lot of challenges, a lot of just great opportunities for us, and we'll be excited and ready to compete tomorrow night. Start the first question here in the third row. Please address yourself there, Mike. Mike McFeely from yeah. the Forum in Fargo. Yeah. Yeah. Dave. Thanks. Y you're a guy that's, that spent almost your entire life in North Dakota. I think you went to Northern Iowa for a, for a little bit. Um, and tomorrow night you're going to be coaching uh, against Coach Krzyzewski on the biggest stage. Can you just put that in perspective, what that means for a North Dakota kid? It's obviously really, really, really cool. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you are who you are because of your roots. And, um, you know, I was raised by two wonderful people, uh, my mom and dad, John and Marcia, and my sister, a great family that really is the core of who I am. Uh, and again, hopefully who I am is the, you know, a guy of, <clears throat> excuse me, a tremendous virtue. Um, but to be on this stage you know, tomorrow night, CBS, uh, to coach against, a, a, obviously, a Hall of Famer, a legend, um, I, I don't know if I could have dreamt this, Mike, uh, a couple years ago. Are you ready for it? Absolutely. I mean, it, ready or not, here it comes. And, and so um, with a great challenge, becomes a great opportunity, and uh, certainly I'm going to be ready for it, and I know our guys will as well. Have you had a chance to talk to Coach Krzyzewski? I have not had a chance to talk to Coach. Just pass the mic up. Thank you. Hey, I, I'm just curious. When you go up in a matchup like this against a team with you know future NBA players, a guy like Zion who's obviously taken over college basketball, do you, as a coach, kind of view this as as a a stressful, challenging situation or something you're excited about? How do I how do I scheme against these guys? How do I make this come together? Coach Miles, the guy who I started working with, said, you know, when he left college, he got into college coaching because of the environment and the experience of college, and so. I get the narrative about stress and all this, but this is fun. You think about it. We get to we get to play college basketball. We get to coach college basketball, um, and so I, I think maybe if there was any pressure, it was the other night, Wednesday night in Dayton, for some of our guys to just experience that. But that's gone away, and we're all excited for the opportunity. On the right side, uh, Dave, uh, facing Duke. Uh, I think Benny sort of addresses saying we're human, but. On your end, any fear of uh, deer in the headlights with your guys, a team with no seniors? You know, I, I think it was just thinking about that. They don't have any seniors either. <laughs> um, uh, I really, again, I think we just kind of addressed that in the last question a little bit. I think some of that deer in headlights, I did see a little bit of that the other night against a really good North Carolina Central team. And I think some of that's gone. Um, you, you, I mean, we expect a lot of pressure from Duke. We um, expect them to come out, teed up, ready to go like the number one seed would, um, and, and we'll see. But I think it's, it's important, like we've stressed to them all along, the quicker you can figure out you're doing something that you've done your entire life, uh, the quicker your chances of success will be. Coach, you're on the left side. Coach, whether it's at a, a shoot-around or even having the guys on stage before you came up, there's a certain chemistry and camaraderie among the guys. Was that something that was present from the start of the season? Did it develop throughout the season? And what was Vinny's role in all of that? Yeah, I was thinking about that, uh, Josh. It, it really has, and it, it really went back to about May, early June, when our guys went on, a, uh, on an FCS, like, week-long deal in the Twin Cities and really formed a great bond. The, there was um, a great bunch of eight guys that stuck around, uh, you know, in the spring and had a tremendous spring. And then they welcomed and embraced those six new guys with open arms. And... Uh, for a guy like Vinny to come in and, and to be named captain five, six, couple months, uh, five, six weeks, maybe a couple months into it is, is pretty darn neat. And, but you can see his personality. You can see his smile. You can see his um, sense for the moment that, that a, his guys embrace him and he embraces them real quick. Here in the middle, coach. What changes have you seen in Sam Griesel throughout the year, Dave, from the start of the year, true freshman up until la last night, I guess? I think the biggest, one of the, one of the biggest things with Sam is, is Vinny. 
um, and it, it makes more sense to me when, you, when you're there at 6 a.m. in the morning for lifting sessions and just different things where Vinny just breeds confidence in everybody, myself included. And when we were able to get Sam in late May, we knew we had something really special. That's a young man that looks the part, um, just attacks his, his job, you know, with, 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 uh, with great resolve every day. He's been more invested, you know, in the weight room and the diet and those things than I anticipated. Um, but I think you could see from the moment we started him that, that he was going to be pretty good. And then he had that injury. And, and I think it was really telling when he came back in that Omaha game that he didn't play great, but he didn't play with fear. And you think about it sitting there with five, six weeks with a knee injury like that, he could have been hesitant. But he's growing. He's, he's come out of his shell a little bit socially and been, been more comfortable uh, getting outward. And I think a big part of that is Vinny and, and his teammates just breeding confidence into him all the time. Coach. Here on the left side. You played Gonzaga as a number one team in Spokane in late November. Do you use that game as a template at all coming into this game, at least from mindset point of view? Maybe the first 10 minutes, that's it. <laughs> um, you know, we had a lot of other extenuating circumstances at the time. Um, some tough travel. Uh, Sam was out. It's a game where Cameron got hurt. Um, but, but also, I, I think it, it showed us that, you know, for the first 10 minutes when we were locked in and um, able and fresh, so to speak, um, we can compete, and, but we know that we're a different team. The Duke's obviously got more experience now uh, than, the, than they did at that time of the year, like Gonzaga would this time of year. Um, but there's certainly some things, hopefully, that we can lean on. Dave, uh, how much did Dayton, the first four game, help just kind of get the taste in the mouth of your team and understanding what an NCAA tournament atmosphere is like? Yeah, uh, I'm hoping it helped a lot. You know, I saw some things that, you, again, I've said it all along about this group. This is an experience group. What I mean by that is, is you can talk to them about an experience, you can show them experience, and they don't quite get it until they actually live the experience. And Wednesday night was them living the experience. And so hopefully that will you know, help us relax, get that deer in headlights out of us, so to speak, early in the game. Coach, on the right side. Uh, Dave, who's the toughest guy on your team to say, let's just play basketball, let's just go out there and play a game? Jared Samuelson. No hesitation. Um, if you go into our video room, there's a big sign that talks about being tough and together. And Jared Samuelson is tough and he's together. His teammates love him. Um, and you really got something in a huddle. Jared doesn't say, he doesn't say much at all. But when, when you get into some of those moments, you go back to Santa Barbara um, at home. You go back to the other night, last night. Uh, when he's teed up and, and he's locked in, it's pretty cool because his teammates really embrace that. And it starts with his toughness. On the left side. A follow up on that, Dave. We, we like to talk about Jared's three point ability, but how about his ability to take some charges and, you know, a small sky out there and he's diving on the floor, getting burns. Just talk about his tenacity defensively. Yeah, I think, I think that's the beauty of March, right? If you flipped open a dictionary and you look for a Division I basketball player, Jared Samuelson's probably not the first guy that shows up. But what you can't measure is somebody's heart. What you can't measure is, you know, someone's basketball IQ. Um, and from the time you saw Jared at, at a camp three, three or four summers ago until today, in, in a sense, it's really not surprising. You know, it's, he's a guy that we talk about setting our jaw and just competing. Jared sets his jaw every day, not just, the, not just in games, but in, in practice and in film sessions. He's at the edge of his seat. And, and a kid that we couldn't hide uh, more his first or second year trying to guard the ball, now he's guarding the, guys, the, the opponent's best uh, perimeter guy. It's a pretty neat deal. Coach, maybe the, the biggest game in the, the history of North Dakota as far as the sporting event with so many eyeballs back home watching on CBS tomorrow night. What would be your message to the, the people back home who are turning in and maybe seeing the Bison for the first time this year? Hope, hopefully we, re, re, we represent the people back home. And North Dakota is a great state. Um, and I like to say this, it's a state that for three, four months out of the year gets really cold. Um, but that keeps the riffraff out, and, and it adds some toughness. And, and I think what you'll see tomorrow, and I think what you've seen the last pack, back of the year when we've got some experience on these guys is, is a blue-collar mentality. In, in Fargo, Fargo, North Dakota, West Fargo, the Red River Valley, Moorhead, the, the state of North Dakota, um, there's some tremendous people uh, with great resolve and toughness, and hopefully that's what the, this Bison men's basketball team looks like as well. Anything Thank else you. for Coach? Thank you. Thank you.
this will be it. This, this is an update. Uh, I'm sure you, like I, am wondering where UCF is. Uh, just received notification that they have not yet arrived to the arena. So uh, when I have more information, I'll let you know. The, uh, the the team is checking in now. The team team and player check in, and they will the, those who are coming to be interviewed will come straight here. So it'll be a few more minutes. The Central Florida players are en route. And just so you're aware, we will have a hard ending at 5.30, so we'll adjust the time accordingly uh, for each interview session. So we're working on extending the window, and I'll get hand signals from the back uh, and communicate when I figure that out. Are we going to get a 60-second extension? You know. Do you have an update on the time? We have the student athletes from the University of Central Florida introducing the players Taco Fall, BJ Taylor, and Aubrey Davis. Open the floor for questions.
and the uh, blue shirt will start here. Kip Coons for Pressbox View. Uh, Aubrey uh, Dawkins, uh, good to see you again first. First time UCF gets an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament after you know, 15 years of being away. What does this mean to you guys to be on this stage this season? It means everything. We worked hard for this. Um, put in the hours, put in the practice, the practice time, and it's, it's, it's a blessing. And we're you know, appreciative to be here. My apologies on the name. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> on the uh, outside in the red shirt. Aubrey, uh, Brian Murphy, Orlando Sentinel. Aubrey, as the guy, as a player on this team who's been to the tournament, what kind of knowledge have you tried to, tried to impart on your teammates about what it's like to play in the tournament and how it's different? Things like that. I mean, you don't want to make the game any bigger than it is. Um, it's still basketball. So you want to stay, stay, stay composed out there and, and take a possession by possession because every game's going to be grinded out. Not going to be any blowouts, really. You got to earn it, and that's what it's all about. Go again in the red shirt. When you went to the tournament with Michigan, was there something uh, that after it was all done, it, uh, did you feel like uh, something that surprised you, something you weren't prepared for that caught you off guard while you were in the tournament, anything like that? Not really. Not really. Um, like I said, guys are going to play hard. This is the, the biggest stage in college basketball, so you, you, you know guys are going to bring it, and so you just got to expect that and be ready for it. On the uh, back row, Pete. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Uh, Taco, what's it like to be here uh, for you? I know you've been working hard to get uh, UCF to the tournament. Now, as a senior, you get a chance to play. Um, for me, for us, I would say it means everything. Um, after all the hard work that we put in, um, everything that we've been through, all the injuries, after all this year being finally able to Finally able to pull it off, um, especially in our senior year, we had to make it happen. And uh, we just put our head down and say we had to make it and we made it happen. But now we just can't um, get too happy. Like, like Aubrey said, we got to go out there and compete every night because every team is going to bring it. The red shirt. To BJ, you know, all three of you guys were injured at points last year. And now, near the end of the year, you guys have you guys have you know all been banged up, but not suffered any debilitating injuries. How big is that? And how like just relieving has it been to just really kind of be able to play the entire season? I mean, it's been great uh, having the three of us out there the entire season. You know, just being able to play together. Uh, we've kind of been together for like three seasons now, and finally be out there. You know, this year and all play together and stay healthy. Uh, it's been a blessing, and it's been a, it's been a real joy playing with with both these guys next to me. Um, so you know. Like Taco said, you know, we're just trying to get satisfied and, you know, see how far we can take this thing. And the blue shirt? Yeah, uh, Kip Coons again for Press Box View. Uh, BJ, VCU, like you guys, are a team known for defense. What, what is your expectation of, of the way that game could go tomorrow? Uh, I mean, I think the biggest thing to talk about VCU is they're, they're aggressive and they want to press, uh, try to get after you, speed the game up. So for us, you know, we know we have to stay composed. We have to play our game and, you know, we have to, we have to dictate the tempo. So, I mean, that's my biggest thing is just, you know, playing our game the same way we've been playing it the entire season. Uh, and, you know, usually when we've done that throughout the season, we've been successful. But they're a really good basketball team. They've had a great season. And uh, we know it's going to be a very competitive game. On the right side. Yeah, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. BJ, you mentioned yesterday about how the football team has sort of done their part to put, put UCF on the national map. How have you, how have you guys um, – have you noticed that since they got good, more people notice you, and what do you guys have to do to build up on that? I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they've kind of got this thing started uh, with the way they've been playing the last two seasons, you know, going undefeated and, you know, only losing one game this year. I mean, they've done so much for the university and, and keep bringing recognition to the school. And, you know, we're just trying to do our part now by, you know, reaching that level and continuing to grow the, the athletics program at UCF because, I mean, they put it on a national stage and, you know, that's what we're trying to do here at March Madness and, you know, not just by showing up, by, by winning and, you know, having a good effort out here. To Taco and BJ, can you think about what your emotions are going to be like tomorrow night? You guys have talked about this for four years, BJ, for you five, about what, about getting to this point and now you're here. Uh, can you even imagine what you're going to both be feeling like tomorrow? Taco first and then BJ. 
I mean, like we said, we were very happy to have made it after all the hard work that we put in. But at the same time, we, we just don't want to get too too happy. At the end of the day, it's a basketball game. You got to stay locked, locked in. Um, it's a, Obviously, it's a big deal. We're not going to downgrade it. But at the same time, it's still a basketball game. We got to go out there and compete and not, not, not let our emotions take over. Just lock, stay locked in, make sure we lead the guys, and um, just do our part. I mean, yeah, uh, basically what Taco said. I mean, we don't we don't want to get satisfied in, in the locker room and when in our talks we haven't been satisfied. Um, we, we came here, you know, not just to show up, but we want to win games. And you know, it starts with VCU tomorrow, so that that's our main focus right now. But you know, we're we're, we're blessed to be here and it's an honor to be here. But you know, that our goal isn't just to get here. You know, we want to we want to win it and you know make a statement. Question here on the front. David Hale with ESPN. Taco, I apologize for a little bit of a non-basketball question, but I know you talked um, in the past about the, the Muslim travel ban and, and how you felt about that. And then last week, of course, the, the horrific incident in New Zealand. I'm curious what your um, emotions were after hearing about that. And do you kind of embrace uh, an opportunity to be part of a conversation about how um, you know, people within the Muslim world are, are viewed here and, and elsewhere? I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, it's always, I mean, I love, I love the game of basketball, but it's always bigger than that. Um, being able to represent what we, what we are about is a, means a great deal to me. I mean, I was very sad when I heard, saw what happened um, down in New Zealand. Um, I thought about it a lot, but, you know, we just got to, you just got to learn how to get along. I mean, everybody, we all pretty much people, regardless of the religion. Um, me, I grew up in Senegal. We, we have a lot of Muslims. We have a lot of Christians. We all... We all get along, and that's that's the culture where I grew in. So I really don't see that. But at the same time, we just you know got to learn to love each other, and uh, that's that's how I see things. We we'll have one more question for the student athletes in the front right. Aubrey, even though you're not listed as a senior, it feels like you're a senior. Um, when will you start thinking about what your future is? Hopefully. Know, in a few weeks when, when you know, if, if we're not fortunate to go that far, I guess. Um, so I haven't thought about it too much, not really paying attention to it, just kind of, you know, taking these days as they come, focusing on the game in front of us, the practice in front of us, not looking too far in the future. And I'll cross that bridge when it gets here. Thank you, guys.
here to have 15 minutes. Right, so 5.38 right now would be this time. So it was 5.40. Is that right? Is that what I said? 5.40? University of Central Florida head coach Johnny Dawkins, uh, opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Uh, it's excited to be here. You know, always have loved this environment. Uh, chance to compete in NCAA tournament is special, and I'm just happy that our, our, you know, our players have an opportunity to experience it. Questions? Brian. Start here with Pete. Back row. Pete Iacobelli, Associated Press. Johnny, was it any different getting this group to uh, an NCAA tournament than maybe, uh, than maybe Stanford or during your time with Duke? Uh, well, I think, I think they all are different. You know, I think every time you take a team, because they're all going to have different personnel, they're all going to have unique challenges. And, and this year was no different with the group that we had. Uh, probably the biggest difference with this group is that, you know, we only had one player on the team that had any NCAA experience. So that, that's, always, that's always tough. And uh, I thought we did a good job of kind of imparting you know, our knowledge from our playing days, whether it's you know, our coaching staff who've all played, as well as myself, trying to let them know what the experience is going to be like, how we have to get there. So I, I think everyone did a really good job of, uh, of lending that type of support to our players as we've gone through the process. On the right side in the red shirt. Brian Murphy, Orlando Sentinel. Coach, you know, we've talked about injuries in the past, and now as we get to the end of this season, guys have been banged up, but you guys have not suffered any really debilitating injuries to any star players unlike last year. So talk about how satisfying that has been for you to coach a, really a full team this year. I, I wish I could explain to you how, how exciting that's been for us because we, we've, we've battled that a lot. And uh, this season we've remained you know, relatively healthy, you know, and, and that's, I think, put us in this position. You know, all of our guys have been able to compete most every night. And uh, when we've been healthy, you know, we've been very competitive. So I'm just really happy for our guys. And again, I, I look at our strength and conditioning. I look at our trainers. You know, those guys did an amazing job of making sure that we were, you know, healthy and fresh. And, uh, and, and so I, I think they play a major role in that. And, uh, I, and they did a great job. In the middle on the aisle. I'm a bad auctioneer. On the other aisle. Kip Coons for Press Box View. Johnny, we're treated here to the biggest personality in college basketball in Zion Williamson and the biggest player in Taco Fall. What, what, does, that, um, what does that do for the, you know, the, the setting here as far as m turning this into a, a, a show as much as a championship? Well, I think the NCAA is always going to have some amazing storylines, and, uh, and that's no different with Zion and Taco. I mean, they both are uniquely different players, 
but their personalities are amazing. You know, Zion, of course, I hadn't seen him play much, but what I have seen, he's one, one of the most talented basketball I've ever seen, players I've ever seen play on the collegiate level. And uh, with Taco, I mean, as big as he is, I mean, with his, his mobility, he also is a unique player at, at this level. I mean, can, he's both ends of the floor, he's dynamic, he protects the rim, shot blocking, altering shots offensively. He's really improved his skill set. He scores around the basket, doesn't need to dunk everything to score. So both of those players, I think, in an environment like this is, uh, is great because they get a chance to showcase kind of who they are, you know, during this time of their careers. The red shirt. We asked Aubrey about uh, being in the tournament and what he's told his teammates about what it's like to be in the tournament. I wonder if you have told, you know, your guys about what to expect and, and how it's different, you know, how do you handle yourself in a tournament you know, like that? No, definitely. You know, I, I, as I said earlier, we, we definitely talked about this experience and, and what, 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 what to expect. Uh, and basically what we try to tell our players is just, just stay in the moment, you know, and enjoy this experience. Uh, this is something that you should cherish. These are hard to come by, and when you, when you have this opportunity, make the most out of it. And so we kind of talked to them that way, you know, along the process. We talked about how to get there and how consistent we need to be in order to give ourselves a chance to be in this position. And I think all of those things coming from not just myself, but my staff. Like I said, Coach Norris, who played in the tournament. You know, Coach Taylor played in the tournament. So we have guys that have, uh, you know, been there before and just wanted to make sure that they didn't keep that knowledge, you know, a secret, to share it all throughout the season to make up for the lack of having a number of guys in the locker room that uh, did not have that experience. Back row on the left. Johnny, um, it, it seems like Taco's a very interesting young man. And, you know, when you guys came to Charleston a couple of years ago to play in that tournament, you know, he was very interesting to talk to up here, the same thing. Can you uh, discuss his development as both a person and a player? And what do you think is, his future is in this game beyond uh, college? Well, as a person and a player, he's one of the best human beings you're going to meet. I um, mean, hands down. And I've coached a lot of terrific people. And uh, none any better than Taco. Uh, he's, a, he's a beautiful human being. Uh, you know, engaging, you know, intelligent. Uh, just, uh, he's funny. I mean, he, you know, he has the whole gamut. He's, he's a great young man. Uh, in basketball, I think he has a bright future. I mean, I, you know, I hear the game has changed and, and his style of play no longer exists. But when you, when you have a player like Taco Fall with his personality, you know, with who he is in any community, he'd be one of the best people you'd ever have in a community. Uh, you want guys like that around. I know I would as a, as a teammate in that locker room. So I see him playing on the highest level. You know, I don't know how and what path he's going to take, but at 7'6", 300, still has a huge upside in this game because he does. Uh, and he's gotten even better this year throughout the season that I've seen the improvement. So uh, I see him playing at the next level, and that's something that – uh, I think it's, he can accomplish because of his ability on and off the court. On the front right. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel coach. Um, a lot of high school talent comes from the Central Florida area. I'm just wondering, have you used BJ's story or will you use BJ's story when recruiting to say, this is what can happen when you stay home? Definitely. I mean, I think that's, that's very important. I mean, when we have a talented, talented community in Florida and in the Orlando area, and, and we want to keep those young men home and give them a viable option to play for us as opposed to going out of state and playing for other teams. And, and BJ's a perfect example. He could have gone anywhere. You know, he, he chose to stay at UCF because his dream was to do something special for his hometown team. And that's what he's been able to do. You know, I think he's made us all proud you know, at that university and in that community because he sacrificed and made a choice. I wouldn't even call it a sacrifice. He made a choice to be a part of something special in Orlando and not elsewhere. On the right side. Is there a standard within the locker room of what would make this trip to the tournament a successful trip to the tournament? Uh, we haven't really talked about that. You know, the, the thing we want to do is we just want to stay in the moment. Uh, we have a you know, big game coming up tomorrow versus VCU, and, and, and that's the most important thing that's on our mind right now. And after that, you know, we figure out where we are. But, uh, you know, I, I think getting here, is, there's, a, there's a certain level of success just getting in, in this tournament and being involved in it. And then from there, you know, we, we see what can happen. You know, we see what pos what's possible, and we'll find that out when we throw it up tomorrow. Second row here. Yeah, Johnny, just to follow up on the, uh, on, on the Duke angle a little bit, how, how appropriate is it for you to see your old team 
take the floor before you do, and your old coach see you take the floor with your new team uh, in a breakthrough season? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's a little, probably a little <laughs> awkward, actually. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, who could have imagined that would happen? And, and so, um, you know, I'll be excited for them, of course. I'll be rooting for them. I mean, it's my, you know, my alma mater. And, of course, Coach K and I are really good friends as well as, you know, my mentor and coach. So uh, I'll be rooting for those guys to have a successful outcome. And then we'll be preparing for our game. But it, it is awkward because uh, like I said, I've never been in this situation before. But we'll block all those things out. Like I tell our players all the time, stay in the moment. You know, we don't get distracted very easily. That's, I think that's been a big part of the reason we've been able to have some consistency this year is the fact that we always have stayed in the moment. And, uh, and that's what we'll do. And I'll practice what I preach to our players every day. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. All right, guys. Take care.